Okay, so welcome to this next part in the video on uh, the bolzano weierstrass theorem. Uh, so, in this video we're going to uh, discuss the concept of limsup, basically, of a, a bounded sequence. So, uh, we're going to use this in, in the next video in uh, our uh, proof of the bolzano weierstrass theorem. And uh, in the concept of limsup, we're going to uh, use what we proved in the previous video about uh, about monotonically decreasing sequences. Okay, so let x uh, be a sequence, a bounded sequence of real numbers. So I realise I'm just writing out exactly the same thing as I already have written there. But never mind, uh, you have this sequence of real numbers here which is bounded, okay? And we're not assuming anymore that it's monotonically decreasing, it is just bounded. So if I draw it out here, we've got x1, x2, potentially x3 is over here, x4 down here, etc. Okay, so uh, the meaning of bounded means that there is some lower bound, some little m, and there is some upper bound, some big m. So little m is less than or equal to all terms of the sequence x little m, and big m is greater than or equal to all terms of the sequence. So that's, that's true for all m is an element of the natural number. So for all terms of this sequence, this one is less than or equal to all of them, this one is greater than or equal to all of them. So uh, ec this sequence is a bounded sequence. Okay, now we're going to introduce the concept of the lim sup of this sequence because uh, these this sequence might not converge. So uh, think of the sequence 0, 1, 0, 1, the sequence that we've seen before just flipping between 0 and 1. That is a bounded sequence, but it does not converge to a limit. Uh, however, we can define something called lim sup, which in the case of this sequence being bounded, the lim sup will exist, and that is what we're going to define next. So, let me get another piece of paper. Right, so this is not the easiest concept in the world. It is a concept that takes a bit of getting used to. Uh, so, we're going to define the lim sup written like this. Lim sup as n approaches infinity of this sequence xn to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of another sequence which I'll call Sn. And this new sequence we construct from the old sequence. I'm going to show you exactly how you construct uh, this sequence S uh, Sn from the old sequence. So here we have this sequence x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, etc, x6, x7. Okay, we'll, go, we'll stop there. Right. And I'm going to construct a new sequence below it, basically, which is going to be S1. And the way I'm going to define S1, so S1 here is going to be the supremum of the set containing all of the elements here. So the supremum of X1, X2, X3, all of the terms of that sequence. So you take the supremum of this entire, uh, the, the, of the set containing all the terms of this sequence. So basically S1 is the supremum of this entire set here. And because the sequence is bounded, uh, this set is bounded, and therefore its supremum is going to exist. So that's what S1 is going to be. S2 is going to now be another another supremum, it's going to be the supremum of the set containing all elements of the sequence apart from the first element. So you're going to have x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, etc. So all the terms of the sequence except x1, so you're going to take away x1 and then you're going to take the supremum of all of this set here, this orange set, all of the terms in the sequence after from x2 onwards. So you just omit uh, x1 and then hopefully you can start to see the pattern. S3 is going to be another one of these, so S3 is going to be... Um, going to have to stop at S3 because we're going to run out of space, the supremum of X3, X4, X5, i.e. you start with the term X3, the corresponding term, and you take the supremum of uh, all the terms, that term and all terms following it, basically. Uh, so if I try and squeeze in one last one there, it's this set here. So I'll just colour it in, it's that set there, okay? And you go on, you can define S4 to be the supremum of the set X4, X5, X6, so all the terms of the sequence from X4 onwards, etc. So the way I define Sn is that I define it to be the supremum of all terms Xn onwards, so Xn plus 1, 
xn plus 2, etc. Onwards like that. So all terms of the sequence from the term xn onwards, basically. And you take the supremum of that, and that is how you define the sequence sn. Now, I firstly want to convince you that all of these all of these numbers are defined. You can work out all of these numbers, these supremums. Uh, so all the terms of this sequence s are defined. The reason being that s1 is defined uh, because the sequence is bounded, and therefore the set uh, is bounded. Uh, so it will have a supremum. And because this set is bounded, all all of these are just subsets, all of the sets afterwards, so this set here for S2 uh, is just a subset of this one. So this subset, this set is certainly bounded if this larger set is bounded, therefore its supremum also exists and that argument goes on for all the other terms basically. You are taking the supremum of a subset of this original set, the set containing all terms of the sequence, and if the set containing all terms of the sequence is bounded, then any subset of that is also going to be bounded. Okay, uh, simply because if these two numbers are greater than or equal to every element of this of this sequence, so all the elements of the sequence are between this little m and this big M, then if we take a subset of them, it's still going to always be between that little m and that big M, basically. So all of these are bounded and therefore uh, the supremums exist. So this sequence, at least as a sequence, the sequence S is defined. So the sequence S1, S2, S3, S4, etc. It is defined. What we now want to see is that its limit is always going to exist. Okay, so how are we going to see that? Well, the reason is that this sequence is going to be a monotonically decreasing sequence and it's going to be bounded, basically. Bounded below, specifically, which is the important thing, as we saw in the previous video. Uh, so, the reason it's monotonically decreasing, so I'll show you why it's monotonically decreasing. You are taking the supremum of a progressively smaller set, so the supremum cannot possibly go up because all the terms, for instance, in this set here are within that set. So if the supremum, remember, is a number greater than or equal to all elements of this set, and it's the least such element, but uh, the important thing is it's an upper bound. So if it's an upper bound for all of these terms in this set, then it's still going to be an upper bound for all of these terms. It can only go down, for instance, say x1 was the biggest term. So let's imagine uh, that we had x1 here, and then all of the other terms were, let's say, down here. So they were all in this interval here. So all of the terms after x1 were in there. Then initially, the supremum would be this value, x1, i.e. that would be the least upper bound. So s1 would be x1. But as soon as you go on to s2, x1's gone, and all the other terms are down here. So the supremum would suddenly drop to, let's say, there. Okay? So the the supremum can only go down, so it is monotonically decreasing because you are progressively taking the maximum in a way. You can think of supremum as maximum. It's more technical than maximum because, as I say, it doesn't, well, I haven't said, but so the supremum doesn't need to be an element of the set. The maximum does need to be an element of the set. Um, but it's this least upper bound of, uh, of this bounded set, basically. And if you take the supremum of a smaller set, then the only possibility is that it can go down or it can stay the same. It cannot go up. How can it go up if it's... Uh, that? It just wouldn't make any sense, because uh, if it's left... If the supremum has to be greater than or equal to every element in here, all of the elements in here, in this, sec this new set, are within there. So this supremum is certainly going to be uh, greater than or equal to all of the terms in here, so it's going to be greater than or equal to uh, this supremum here. So basically, monotonically increasing means that Sn plus 1, the next term in the sequence, is either less than or equal to Sn, basically. So that's monotonically decreasing. Now what we want, I will need to convince you of, is that it is bounded. Okay, so bounded below, specifically. So um, that just follows because the whole sequence was bounded below. So the whole sequence was within uh, this interval, at little m to big n. So the whole sequence was in here somewhere. So x1, x2, x3, x4, etc. So none of these um, x5. So all of these terms, all of these terms are going to be within here. So basically, the supremum, whatever sup whatever term you go to, so go to any arbitrary term in this sequence, Sn, it is going to have to be, my claim is that Sn is going to have to be greater than or equal to m. Because, remember what Sn is, it is the, it is the supremum of this set, Xn, uh, Xm plus 1, Xn plus 2, etc. 
So that's just the definition of this term, uh, little s n. So why does it have? Why does that imply that it has to be greater than or equal to this value little n? Well, because all of these terms are, have to be greater than or equal to that value little n. The absolutely worst case possible scenario is that all the terms of the sequence are actually equal to this little n, uh, in which case little n would still be a lower bound for this set, but they'd all have to be equal to it, in which case the supremum out of this set would be actually equal to little n. So the worst possible case scenario is that Sn is equal to n. All other cases, you'll have at least one element of this set which is greater than, uh, strictly greater than little m, and which will push the supremum up to be greater than little m. But it cannot possibly go below it, because if it went below it, that would imply uh, that all the terms in all the elements of this set were less than uh, the were less than the uh, value little m, which is a contradiction, because they were all said to be greater than or equal to it. Right, OK, uh, so this is a monotonically decreasing sequence, uh, and it's bounded. Therefore, it has a limit. So the limit of the sequence Sn, as n approaches infinity, does exist. exist. And this is basically defined for the sequence Xn. So this is how we define lim sup, uh, lim sup of the sequence Xn as n approaches infinity. So it is the limit of the supremums, basically, uh, which is why it's denoted lim sup. So um, it, you take, um, where's the original, um, here's the original sequence up here. So you gradually, um, you grad as you go along this sequence S1, you're gradually uh, making the set over which you're taking the supremums smaller. You're moving along the, uh, the um, starting point for the set uh, over which you're taking the supremum. And that limit must exist, basically. Uh, so let's do a few practices of calculating lim subs to get an idea of this. So if we take, for instance, the sequence, let's take the sequence xn is equal to 1 over n. So this is the sequence. Uh, the first term is going to be 1, so you stick in n is equal to 1, you get 1. The second term is going to be a half. The third term is going to be a third, fourth, etc., fifth, so if we want to take the uh, lim sup of this, so let's firstly calculate the sequence Sn. So uh, the sequence Sn uh, is going to be, is just by definition, it's the supremum of all the terms uh, from Xn onwards. So Xn, Xn plus 1, Xn plus 2, etc. Now let's fill in with... Uh, fill in these terms with what they are in terms of this here. So xn is just going to be equal to 1 over n. So you can fill this in with 1 over n, 1 over n plus 1, 1 over n plus 2, etc. And you go on. But if we draw this on a picture, here is 0, here is 1 over n. And we know that as the uh, denominator gets bigger, the um, fraction overall gets smaller. So the biggest term, because this is a monotonically decreasing sequence, basically, what we can say is that the biggest term in this set is going to be 1 over n. And therefore, the supremum is actually, in this case, going to be a maximum, which is equal to uh, 1 over n. So the maximum of this set is going to be 1 over n. And in this case, the supremum is actually equal to the maximum. Uh, so uh, the supremum, this least upper bound of uh, this set is 1 over n, because 1 over n is a upper bound for this entire set, i.e. every element in this set, 1 over n, is greater than or equal to that element. So 4 1 over n is the element that it's actually equal to. And also, if you take any number smaller than it, uh, then that smaller number is going to be strictly less than 1 over n, which is an element of this set. Therefore, it's no longer going to be an upper bound for this set, because I found you an element which is strictly greater than it. OK, so that's the supremum, 1 over n. Uh, so we get that the sequence Sn is, in this case, in fact, equal to 1 over n. So the lim sup is, in this case, going to be exactly the same as the limit of this sequence, the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n. And of course, we know that that is equal to 0. So there's an example of uh, what exactly what we're doing to make this a little bit more concrete. OK, uh, so in the next video, what we will do is we will use uh, this concept of lim sup and the fact that this always exists if Xn is a bounded sequence, lim sup always exists, and we'll use that uh, to prove that we can construct a uh, a, um, a convergent subsequence of any bounded sequence.